we are going to install a one loop water cooling system for our CPU so that we can overclock it to its full potential and still keep it running at very very low temperatures. What one loop cooling system brought to us was an affordable way to keep our CPUs even cooler than ever before. The only other option was custom made water cooling systems. And even though I still think those are really the best and the coolest things out there, they do cost a few thousands of dollars to install at the very least. So how does this work? Well, a one loop water cooling system, as its name indicates, is basically a cooling water mix who goes around and around in a closed loop. On one hand of the loop you have your water pump and your cooling plate. On the other hand you have a radiator who's being kept cool thanks to massive fans. So our next steps are first to unbox and familiarize ourselves with the water cooling system. Then we will be preparing the motherboard itself to receive um, the water pump and the cooling plates. Thirdly we are going to assemble those 140 mm fans onto the cooling system radiator and the fourth and final step we are simply going to install the whole apparatus inside our computer casing. So there's not really much to it. You can open this thing. Alright, so that's what we're talking about. So it, it's nothing much really, it's just a radiator, same one you would find in your car, which is hooked to a cooling plate right there. The cooling mix is already in the tubes and everything is sealed and it just goes in a one loop so it keeps going around and around and around. Comes with pretty big fans, those are 140s and usually those kind of coolers come with 120s but in this case we went a little bit overboard. Here your electrical cable and all the cool stuff you're gonna need to install that, that cooler. Without further ado, let's jump in. So the first thing you're going to know, and the first thing we're going to do, is to mount the plate on the other side of your motherboard, right here. In our case, we have an 1151, so what we're going to be looking at is 1151 plate, which is the black one. The two other plates are bronze grey. The one we want for that kind of build is black. That's easy. Now that the plate is secure to the motherboard, let's assemble the radiator to the fans. And before we do so, we first need to decide in which direction the fans will be blowing. Depending on the direction the fans will face, air will be blown in or exhausted out of the case. Both can work, but my personal preference is to exhaust the air out of the case. This side of the radiator will be fixed onto the ceiling of the casing. It is possible to fix the radiator outside the case, but we are not going to do this on this build. Let's go ahead and place our 140mm fans onto the radiator. The arrows on the side of the frames show us the airflow direction of the fan. And we can see right now that this will push the air out of the case as we intend to. It is quite easy to adjust the fans onto the radiator so that the screw holes align. And we have eight long screws um, that we are going to place to make sure that the fans sit well and don't move. Now we have to remember that those fans are quite powerful and can create vibrations if they're not well adjusted and assembled to the radiator. 
Now, the last thing I'd like to add is that every one of those fans have an electrical cable, a three pin electrical cable, and it's good to think ahead on where you want those cables to be once the radiator is fixed. Alright, so now we have to tighten the last screws, but please do remember that the fan frames are in plastic and can break if we tighten them too much. And that's it. Now we are going to actually install the water cooling system onto the CPU. And now is a very exciting moment of actually putting the radiator onto the ceiling of the case. So let's handle the radiator, uh, take it by its fans not by the wires or by the tubes. Um, try to find the right place in your casing. Every case is different and you can place the radiator uh, horizontally or vertically depending on the case. In our particular build, we are going to make sure that the Corsair uh, logo is up on the right. And you can see that the tubes uh, will be on the left. They will uh, face directly the exhaust fan. And here is a rather tricky operation of holding the whole apparatus with one hand and place at least the first or the two first screws um, over the case so that it can hold the weight of the whole water cooling system. And now that we have successfully secured the radiator and its fan onto the casing, we are going to place the head of the cooler directly onto the CPU. Now remember that the tubes are quite rigid and so you have to work with them and with the case so that you can find the right angle for those tubes. And once you have found that right angle, uh, you're going to take the bracket who's been supplied with the water cooling and place it directly above uh, the water pump which sits on the cooler plate. With little effort it should snap it into place. Now, now it's time to remove uh, the protective plastic cover um, which isolates the cooling plate and in this particular kit we do not need to add an additional thermo compound paste and now we're going to simply place the cooler head directly onto the CPU And right now I'm putting into place the bolt heads um, so to secure the old water head onto the plate that sits on the other side of the motherboard um, that we installed uh, a few minutes ago. And now uh, we are going to tighten the head bolts uh, with a screwdriver and that will help us make sure that there is a 100% contact between the thermo paste was placed on the water cooler head and the face of the CPU. And yes, please make sure that you do remove the protective plastic 
who sits on top of the logo. It's really, really important. I once uh, forgot about it and after, after a few hours of operation it started to melt all over the cooling head and the motherboard in itself. It was an absolute nightmare. Now the three electrical cable I'm showing uh, right now have nothing to do with the water pump uh, and they have everything to do with um, 140 millimeters fans. Uh, the power SATA will draw electricity directly from the PSU and we'll uh, give it back through the two three pins plugs which uh, we will use to alimenter the 140 millimeter fans. There is a force cord, an additional three pin connector, uh, but this one has nothing to do with electricity. It will um, be plugged directly into the motherboard on one of the fan connectors and will not draw electricity but just give information on the water pump activities. Now this one is easy to recognize as there is only one wire connected onto this three pin. I'm just going to try to find uh, where is the CPU fan connector on the motherboard. And here it is, and plugged in. Alright, time to finally uh, power those 140mm fans. So easily, first clip and second clip. Now let's remember uh, that those wires are not powered so far unless we connect the power SATA directly onto the PSU. Um, next step is to finally power the water pump. And here it's a bit tricky because it's not powered through the PSU as one might uh, think, but it actually is connected through the USB 2 port of your motherboard. So it's a 5 volt basically and now we're gonna first plug in um, difficultly <laughs> um, the power cable into the water pump and as you can see the other side of that cable is nothing more than a USB 2 bridge adapter for your motherboard. Earlier in the video we did connect the water pump to a cable now we are going to plug in the other end of that cable to the USB 2 connector of the motherboard. The power SATA cable which will um, operate the two 140mm fans of the water cooling system. The SATA power cable will stay behind the case. We're not going to transfer it in front like the other three cables. Uh, no, instead we are just going to bring back the power setup plug attached to the water pump that we left unplugged when we were initially installing the water pump cooler system. And now we can just go ahead and match those plugs together. And like any other plugs in our installation, there is a direction to them, so just watch out for it. And without any further ado, let's see if that thing works.